So I'm in a temporary location filming. My audio and video might not be perfect. However, I think it's gonna be good enough for us to dive back into our bash course and talk about inputting information into a bash script. Now I'm not talking about arguments. We've learned that before, but I mean specifically from the standard input or from reading from a file or from reading directly from the command line. I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna do a couple different ways because you want to have a bash script that can detect whether or not it's getting fed information like being piped into it from standard input or if it expects uh, somebody to actually interact or being an interactive sort of bash program. And you can do it automatically. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways and um, yeah, let's learn some stuff. Okay, so first things first, if you go to, I don't know where my, my finger's pointing over here. If you go to this GitHub repository, I'll put a link obviously in the description below, but you can actually get all the files that we're gonna be looking at in this video. So you can go over them and test them and change them and modify them yourself. They're just publicly available in a GitHub repo, again, linked in the description. So let's get right down to business. I wanna show you the files. Uh, we have uh, just one through four and then a text story.txt file. That's just like when we want to input stuff. I'll show you really quick. It's just a, it's actually a jingle from the old Meow Mix uh, commercial, if you're familiar with that. But anyway, that's just a text file. And like I said, there's two different ways that we can get information into a script. We can either uh, use the read command and then type it in like, you know, it'll prompt us for something, or we can pipe something into it using standard input. For example, I wanna look at this script really quick. Now I'm gonna use VI, I've said that before, I use that all the time. Nano is probably the editor you wanna use or whatever you happen to have on your system, but I wanna look inside this first script, one dash detect. And what this is gonna do is show us how we can use a conditional, which you've learned about before, to determine whether there is anything on standard input or not. So what this does, it's just an if statement and then the conditional is dash T, which checks for a file descriptor. And I'll be completely honest, it's a little bit confusing to me what exactly it's testing for because if the test for zero, which stands for standard input, uh, it says if that, then do this. If it's true, then this, but it seems to work backwards the way my brain thinks about it. What I have here is correct. So just use the same format or if you test it and it works opposite of what you expect, just swap it around. But just so you know, if you have a hard time like comprehending what exactly is testing and why is it true versus false, I'm totally with you. Just we'll test this out and you have my script so you can make it work. So what I'm talking about here though, is it says if the file descriptor zero is open, this is true, if it being open is true, then I, that would to me mean that you have sent something on standard input, but it's the opposite of that. So uh, if it, it tests and it either, there's no standard input at all, or it can detect standard input. And I'll show you how that works differently. So let's uh, get out of here. Let's clear the screen. So if we were to do uh, this detect script, just run it on its own without sending in anything on standard input, it says, okay, no standard input is detected. But if we were to do the same thing, but then redirect standard input from that story.txt file, ah, it says I detect standard input. And the other way we can send something standard input is using a pipe command. If, if this is all a little unfamiliar, you can check out my, um, my Linux Essentials course. I talk about redirecting standard input, standard output, that sort of a thing. Uh, so I'll try to put a link up over here into my um, Linux Essentials course, but it covers that. So if this is confusing, check that out and then come back. But anyway, uh, we can also say like cat story.txt and use the pipe symbol and send that to one uh, dash detect and the same thing, it will detect standard input. So we can use that information to set up a conditional what we do, whether we have standard input or don't have standard input, but read the command that you read information into a bash script is actually pretty smart. So let me look, show you really quickly, uh, our simple one. Now, what this command does, this is just a simple bash script and it tells you what it does. It says, I repeat what I'm told. And then read is how we read information into a variable and the variable name is thing. And then it says, you said thing after it fills up this variable using the read command. Now, You'll notice there's no conditionals put in here, right? I didn't, I didn't specify like if the, you know, file descriptor is detected, nothing like that. Read is really smart in that if there is something on standard input, 
it'll just shove it in there. But if there's not, it will prompt you. So you'll see what you'll see what this is supposed to do, right? I repeat what I'm told. Read thing, and then you said thing. It just repeats to us what it loads into that variable. So it works in different ways depending on whether there's standard input or not. So let's get out of here, and we'll just execute it. So without any standard input, it says I repeat what I'm told, and it waits there on the command line. See how it's just waiting? Well, let's type, hello, Bob. You said, hello, Bob. All right, so it waited for us to put something in. As soon as we put something in, it loaded it into that variable, and then it printed that variable back to us, all right? If we were to send it something on standard input, it would just read it out to us. So remember, there's several ways we can do it. Less than is one of the easy ways. I'll send it that whole story. I repeat what I'm told. It didn't prompt me to type anything. It just said, you said I like chicken. Now, you probably see a problem here. If you remember that story, let's look at that story. That story actually has four lines in it, but the read command by default will only read the first line. So it did detect that there was standard input and it loaded it into the variable, but just that first line. Okay, so that is kind of a limitation with the read command is that it will just read uh, that one line by default and then, uh, you know, it'll, it'll go on from there. And that's what it did. It loaded it up and then it printed it back. So that is a decent way to get information in if it's just like one word or one line. And then you don't have to worry about if statements to determine whether or not there's standard input or not, because read will just do what we just witnessed, right? If there's no standard input, it'll make you type it in and it'll wait there until you do. Um, so that might be all you need, but let's look at, let's clear the screen. It's getting kind of cluttered here. Um, let's look at number three, because this is if you want to feed more information into a variable, so let's just look at this. My note at the top says this will read a multi-line file, but you can only enter a single line, all right? So this is getting smarter, but it's still not perfect. And I wanna go through this because this is a little more complicated. And I put a lot of like sleep and echo commands so it's user friendly on the command line. Obviously that's not part of the logic of reading stuff in, it just makes it easier to use. So let's go through this. So first of all, it says, tell me something cool. So it'll, it'll type that out and then it does the test. All right. It says, all right, if there's something on standard input, uh, then it will, uh, well, again, the way it works backwards in my head, if it detects that this is open, then that means that nothing was entered. So it's going to say read thing and it will make us type it in. We type it in and then it says, Hmm, interesting goes through and then it goes all the way done. So if, if there's nothing on standard input, this is the section it will execute. And then it will skip all the way down to the bottom past. It won't execute this else stuff. And it'll say, here's what you told me. And it will echo the thing. Okay. The thing that we typed in is what it will echo, but it's just that one line, right? Because as soon as we type in a line and press enter, it's going to load that into the thing variable. And then it's going to, um, echo thing down here. Right. However, if there's something on standard input, it's going to say, oh, okay, you pass me a file that works too. And that will then load it into the thing variable. But notice this is a little bit different than last time. The read very, or the read command has an option dash D, which stands for delimiter. Basically what delimits the end of the line or the end of what I'm sending. And what I did is I set the delimiter to nothing. I just put like a single quote, single quote. So it's like a null. So it means that there is nothing that means I'm done typing until you get to the end of the file itself. So by there's no delimiter saying like, that's the first line and I want you to stop reading. It will read all the way until it gets to the very end of the file. And that's what it does. So it will accept a multi-line file, but it will still up here, we're only able to enter one. Now, if we put read dash D and if we put this up here, we'd have a problem because we can't ever enter the end of line care or the end of file character control D, which is if you're a, if you're a Unix like pro, you might think, oh, just do control D. It doesn't accept control D because it's not that kind of a program. Uh, it's, it actually just seizes control until you, it gets an end of file, which is not something we can give it interactively on the command line. So that's, that's an issue that we can't solve by doing that. 
However, it will detect the end of the file when it's actually reading a file. So let's test this out because this is kind of cool. Quit. Uh, we'll just do uh, feed me more. Now it says, tell me something cool. I didn't give it anything on standard input. So I'm going to say, this is a thing I'm telling you. And if I wanted to do another line and I hit enter, uh, it's too late. It, it accepted it. it says, oh, interesting. Here's what you told me. This is a thing I'm telling you. So it showed us exactly what I typed in, but remember it was limited to that one line. All right, now if we were to do the same thing, but we were to feed it, and I'm gonna feed it a different way. I'm gonna do cat story.txt, pipe that into the feed me more script. Remember, it works the same. You can do the less than in the file name, or we can you know, just pipe it in directly into standard input. Now it's gonna do something different. It's gonna say, tell me something cool. Oh, you passed me a file. That works too, got it. Here's what you told me. And it printed the entire thing. Because remember, we did that dash D and then the null delimiter. So it just kept on reading until it got to the very end of the file. So that is pretty convenient. You could read in a multi-line file, but again, it doesn't allow us to read in multi lines from an interactive prompt. And you're probably, you can probably guess where I'm going with this. If we look, we have four files and our final project gives us a way that we can do this. Now, as with all things with bash scripting, there's like a hundred ways to accomplish things. We could do just all sorts of things. Uh, this is one way that uh, is pretty simple in my mind. So this is the way I'm showing you how to do. Again, with all of these, experiment and do all the different ways that you can think of. Google some better ways. Maybe you want to use an expect script, which is usually used when you're waiting for a password prompt. I, I don't really like to do that because I think typing in a password in a bash script is kind of a dangerous thing. So anyway, uh, but there's lots of ways to accomplish stuff. What I'm gonna show you now is how you can get multi lines from standard input like we just did and interactively on the command line itself. So let's look at that last script. All right, so we're here, I'm gonna clear the screen and I wanna look at that final project. This is a big one, so we're gonna have to scroll a little bit and it says, okay, tell me a story or slip me a note via standard input. And then it sleeps to, for drama, I guess. <laughs> and then it does the test. And if it, um, if there's no nothing on standard input, it'll say, okay, no standard input detected. We're gonna do this by hand. Type your story. And when you're done, press enter on a blank line. All right, so it gives us the instructions. And here is the kind of the magic that uh, we're gonna we're gonna cover. So we do a while loop, and it says while true, which means it's gonna run forever because true is always true. When you run the command true, it always tests as true. It's literally the name of the file of the, of the command here. So it's gonna do this loop forever and ever unless we manually break it, okay? So we start by read text. So it's going to read from our command line. It's gonna wait for us to enter something. We enter it, it's gonna put whatever we put in that line in the variable called text when we hit enter. But then it says, okay, if the variable text is equal to nothing, meaning I just pressed enter, remember it said press enter on a blank line up here. If it detects that I just pressed enter, it's going to send a break command, which is how you get out of a loop without like meeting the, without this ever being false. If you hit break, it's gonna skip directly out of that loop and that's what we want it to do. But if we entered actual text, it's going to say result, which is a new variable. It's gonna say result plus equals, which means I want you to take result and I want you to add to the end of it text. So what it just, you know, what it read up here, the variable text, I want that added to it. And also this magical, here, let me get just this part highlighted. Dollar sign, single quote, backslash N, single quote. What that means is new line, carriage return, right? I want you to put the text that was just entered and a carriage return in the result variable added to the end of it. Now, the first time there's nothing in there. So it's just going to create the result variable and put the text with a, a line break. But then because we're in a never ending while loop, it's gonna start at the very beginning and it's gonna read text again and put a brand new value into text. And then as long as that brand new value is in a blank line, it's going to add it to the variable result with a blank line or with a with a new line character and then start at the beginning until it recognizes that we did that we just entered a blank line 
and then it will break with this result variable all filled up. Okay. And now if we were to enter something with STD in, you know, standard input, then it's just going to do like we did before. It's going to read it in all the way to the end of the file in directly into the result variable. Remember, I, I didn't do anything with text like I had to appear. This is like a temporary variable. And then I just like loaded up result iteration after iteration until it de detected a blank line. Down here, we just read the whole file into result. And then it says, okay, I got your story. Regardless of how it got entered in, it said, I got your story. Let's see if I remember it. Uh, a story by, and then this is just an environment variable called user. Uh, so it's going to, you know, get that. And it says, and it echoes the result. And of course, then it says it's going to post it on 4chan because I have a sick sense of humor. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense, but let's see how it works. And I'm going to run uh, without standard input first. So this should be completely interactive. Tell me a story or slip me a note via standard input. No standard input detected. We're gonna do this by hand. Type your story and when you're done, enter a blank line. Okay, this is a great story, Bob. Press enter. Ha ha, I'm, I can still type because it went through that loop again. I'm going to tell you now. Press enter again. Oh, <laughs> maybe I'm not gonna tell him now because it entered both of those lines in and then sure enough, I uh, got your story story by root because that's the user i'm logged in as right now uh this is a great story bob i'm going to tell you now uh and then that was the whole thing now i'm going to post it on 4chan so we can do the same exact thing if we use standard input so again back like the less than symbol and we're going to input the contents of story.txt into there and now it should detect standard input and use that as its input tell me a story uh, standard input detected looking now. Ooh, sweet note. I love it when they're folded up like that. Got your story. And sure enough, it gave us the entire story from that file. Now I know that was just kind of silly examples of how you can do that, but standard input and, uh, interactive mode, it's nice to have your scripts do both because sometimes you want to dump information into a script, but sometimes you want to have a script, uh, that you could dump stuff into also ask you if you don't dump the stuff. And it was kind of tricky. I actually had to do a little bit of Googling and, and get the gears in my brain unrusty to remember how on earth I could read multi-line information into a variable using read. But that final project thing, that is the simplest way that I could come up with to do that. And then we've just loaded that result variable up with multiple lines because that while loop will just keep adding to it until it detects that blank line. And then it breaks out of that loop and does the stuff with the result variable uh, that we loaded up. Anyway, uh, I just, I love playing with Bash. I hope you take these scripts and play with them, adjust them, do other cool things. Let me know in the comments uh, your favorite way of getting data into a file. Maybe it's completely different. Maybe you do something that's not like this at all. Let us know in the comments because again, there's a hundred ways to do stuff in Bash and I just try to come up with the simplest and most straightforward ways and show you. Anyway, learn everything. Do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you at the next video.